Good evening. This is Chairwoman Julie Hen. I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. I invite you to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to be led by Mr. Christian Thomas. We will then have a moment of silence in recognition of those who have served education in Baltimore County. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's Board of Education meeting is being held in person and virtually and broadcast online through Microsoft Teams and through BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. The first item on the agenda is consideration of the agenda, May 4th agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? not aware of any additions or changes to tonight's agenda. Thank you. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Open Meetings Act for the following reasons. One, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. And 10, discuss public security if the public body determines that public discussion would constitute a risk to the public or to public security, including one, the deployment of fire and police services and staff, and two, the development and implementation of emergency plans. The minutes of the closed session and information summary can be found on board docs under this board meeting agenda date. The next item on the agenda is personnel matters, and for that I call on Ms. Anderson. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. I would like the board's consent for the following personnel matters, retirements, resignations, leaves, deceased, recognition of service. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits D1 through D4? So moved, Mac. So Do moved. So second Offerman. Thank you. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Rao? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jost? Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is administrative appointments, and for that I call on Dr. Williams. Madam Chair Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, and members of the board, I'm bringing forward the following administrative appointments for your approval. There are eight this evening. Principal of Pine Grove Elementary School, Assistant Principal at Colgate Elementary School, Director of Social Emotional Support in the Department of Social Emotional Support, Manager of Office of Cert Certification, Coordinator Elementary Mathematics in the of Office of Mathematics, Senior Supervisor, Design Office of Facilities, Construction and Improvement, Senior Operations Supervisor, Office of Facilities, and Supervisor, Application Administration and Support in the Office of Enterprise Applications. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in Exhibit E1? So moved, Mac. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Do second, I have a second? Ms. Causey. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Any discuss discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rao? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jost? Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Dr. Williams? Yes, thank you. Our first appointment is Emily R. Davidi, 
from Supervisor Elementary Mathematics in the Office of Math Mathematics to the Coordinator of Elementary Mathematics in the Office of Mathematics. She brings to us over 13 years of experience in Baltimore County. Her previous positions include a teacher resource in the Office of Mathematics pre-K to 12 and a classroom teacher at Owings Mills Elementary School. Congratulations, Ms. Emily R. Davidi. Our next appointment is Michael S. Gifford from Teacher Resource in the, at Featherbed Lane Elementary to Assistant Principal at Colgate Elementary School. He brings to us over eight years of experience in Baltimore County. His previous positions include uh, elementary teacher at Lions Mill Elementary School, Hellthorpe Elementary School, and prior experience in Brunswick County Public Schools and even Fairfax County Public Schools. Congratulations, Michael S. Gifford. <laughs> Next, we have Kaylee M. Haupt from Senior Project Engineer, Office of Facilities, Construction and Improvement to the Senior Supervisor of Design in the Office of Facilities and Improvement. She brings over five years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a project engineer in the Office of Facilities, Construction, and Improvement, and also prior experience at Burdett, Kohler, Murphy, and Associates over five years. So congratulations, Kaylee M. Halt. <laughs> Next appointment is Melvin C. Jones from the Field Representative Building Services in the Office of Facilities Operations to the Senior Operations Supervisor in the Office of Facilities Operations. He brings over seven years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, he served as the Building Operations Supervisor II at Johnny Cake Elementary School, Assistant Building Operations Supervisors, Supervisor at Woodlawn High School, and prior experience at Morgan State University Student Center and FedEx Ground. Congratulations, Melvin C. Jones. <laughs> Our next appointment is Valerie D. Lewis from Assistant Principal at Timber Grove Elementary to Principal of Pine Grove Elementary School. She brings over 22 years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a classroom teacher at Wood Home Elementary, Randallstown Elementary, a resource teacher in the Office of Language Arts and classroom teacher at Woodhome, Winfield, and Pleasant Plains Elementary School. Congratulations, Principal Valerie D. Lewis. <laughs> Next appointment is Patricia Mustafer from Coordinator in the Department of Social Emotional Support to Director of Social Emotional Support in the Department of Social Emotional Support. She brings over 19 years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a social worker in the Office of Special Education and previous experience at the Board of Child Care, Strawbridge School, and ARC of Baltimore. So congratulations, Patricia Mustafer. <laughs> the next appointment is Carla Simmons, sorry, Carla Simons, from Supervisor of the Office of Certification to the Manager of the Office of Certification. She brings nine years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a Human Resources Office Officer in the Office of Certification, Certification Analyst in that same office, and has prior experience in Baltimore City Public Schools over 10 years. Congratulations, Carla Simons. And our last appointment is Antoinette Weber uh, from Senior Application Administrator in the Office of Enterprise Applications to Supervisor Applications, Administration, and Support in the Office of Enterprise Applications. She brings over two years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a Student Information Reporting Analyst in the Department of Technology and over 10 years of experience at the University of Baltimore. So congratulations, Antoinette Weaver. Okay. 
Thank you, Dr. Williams, and congratulations again to all. Our next item is public comment. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by his staff. The Board of Education will conduct the public comment portion of the meeting by allowing those who registered to speak to attend in person. Registration was open to the public one week prior to tonight's board meeting and was closed at 3 p.m. yesterday for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting. Board practice limits to 10 the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting. Speakers are selected randomly using an electronic selection process from all registrations received within the designated time frame. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the board. Of course, if fewer than 10 registrations are received, all who registered will be permitted to speak. However, no speaker substitutions will be allowed. While we encourage public input on policy programs and practices within the purview of this board and this school system, this is not the proper forum to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. We encourage everyone to utilize existing dispute resolution processes as appropriate. I remind everyone that inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. I ask speakers to observe the three minute clock which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the tone or see that time has expired. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related to public education in Baltimore County. If not selected, the public may submit their comments to the board members via email at boe at bcps.org. More information is provided on the board's website at bcps.org under Board of Education, Participation by the Public. I now call on our advisory and stakeholder group leaders to speak. Our first speaker is Cindy Sexton with TABCO. Welcome. Good evening, Chair Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. Everybody appreciates teachers this week, right? Because it's Teacher Appreciation Week, of course. And thank you to all the educators. There aren't enough words to tell you how much you are appreciated. For all you do for our students every single day, know that it matters. Well, the funny but not really funny thing is educators don't feel appreciated. They are leaving the profession at alarming rates and there are not enough new teachers to fill the slots. But what does feeling appreciated look like? I have spoken many times about workload. This year's workload was even greater due to coverages, discipline concerns, and the emotional and mental health needs of our students, not to mention their academic needs, which educators are always focused on. What will it take for our educators to feel appreciated? Tonight, I'm gonna to focus on the money. For our educators to keep them and to attract new ones to BCPS, we must. We must have a compensation package that goes beyond a 3% mid-year COLA and STEP. On February 22nd, this board unanimously supported a motion which read in part to prioritize the increase in compensation for the employees. I ask you, this board, to stand by your own motion to use the funds in the operating budget to take care of our people. We absolutely need a better package and the money is there. I know this means hard choices. As leaders, we face them every day. But it is a core value in the compass. A high performing workforce is essential to BCPS becoming a world class school system. We can't have that without our educators. And if we don't compensate them fairly, many won't stay. And that isn't okay because our students need them. If, as another core value also states, effective teaching is the most essential factor in student learning, then you simply must put the money there as well. Without our educators, we don't have a system to teach our students. We need them and we need to pay them. BCPS and TABCO negotiated for many hours around salary steps, COLA adjustment, salary scale restructuring, and more. Please honor that time and effort that went into those negotiations. Let's take care of our educators so they can take care of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Next is general public comment, and our first speaker is Sharon Seroff.
Good evening. Good evening. I wonder if you guys are getting sick of seeing me here. At last month's board meeting, I witnessed something very concerning with regards to special education. I saw the school board members more concerned about the amount of money spent on non-public placements and saving money by bringing students back into the public school system. Special education placements should not be about money. They should be about whether or not the child's IEP can be best met in that school. Yes, we are supposed to make every effort to place a child in the least restrictive environment, but we also need to take into consideration can that child's needs be met? I know many individuals in this county feel that the least restrictive environment means the general education classroom, but that's simply not true. Not all children with disabilities can be serviced in the general education environment. Unfortunately, I have seen BCPS make placement decisions based on that interpretation of least restrictive environment, the supposed willingness of, of the Office of Transportation to transport a child to a particular school. If a school has a similar alphabet soup program, such as CALS or SEL class, but not in that child's age group, or the Office of Special Education doesn't feel their needs can be serviced in a program like the VLP, because they require outside general education services. And incidentally, we're providing uh, speech and language services to students via virtual because we simply don't have enough speech and language therapists. By making these bad types of bad placement decisions, BCPS has violated these students' rights to a free and appropriate public education. I also want to note that these bad decisions have impacted students in the home and hospital program more than any other year. The decision to not allow students with outside general education services to participate in virtual learning program has caused a severe shortage of tutors in home and hospital. The result is students who are not able to receive services or basic access to instruction for weeks and months. And how are we providing that compensatory service? E-learning in the summertime. How is that appropriate? We need to make better decisions, and we can. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Our next speaker is Belinda Lawson. Ms. Lawson? Thank you. Our next speaker is Simone Voligius. Simone? Okay. Amy Adams. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Our students are smart. They might not be very academically proficient right now, but they're observant. What's going on in our schools that every day there are fights? Some make the news, some injure students, teachers, and staff. There are social media accounts for many middle and high school schools that show videos of fights. You might shut one down, but the kids will set up a new one. Why? Are they crying out for attention? Our kids are not okay. They don't feel valued. They think they don't matter. Why? Perhaps because for two academic years, they watched the world react to the pandemic. Here in Maryland, their schools, clubs, rec and school sports were shut down. Bars, movies, and stadiums opened before the schools. When talking to the kids of all ages about what they think is going on in schools, they'll tell you. They are unwell. They're anxious to be back with their peers. They got used to inactivity, and it's hard to be motivated to work and join activities. Throughout this year, we've seen, quote, an uptick in violence. There's a group of disruptive kids, many who have underlying issues, who are creating chaos. For the majority of kids who are in school to learn and grow socially, they feel like they don't matter. 
Why? Because the disruptive kids know that there are not many meaningful consequences. They can act out and carry on like nothing happened. They can bully their peers with no intervention. They can smoke pot in school. They can fight each other or sexually assault their peers and most likely not be arrested. They can use their phone without restriction during class. But to all the kids watching, something is happening and they're anxious, distracted, scared, and feel invisible. The victims feel like they don't matter. I would love to hear the student member of the board discuss this. I know he works very hard to connect with schools across the county. What are you hearing and can you elevate their voice? At the last equity committee meeting and the state board meeting, BCPS presented three schools who are piloting the Black Boy Joy and Genius program that serves students who are identified as at risk. It seems to be really successful for the kids and that's fantastic. You know why it's working? Because those kids feel valued. Adults are working hard to spend time with them and connect with them and mentor them. That's what our kids are craving. I hope that to make connections with school community, their peers and teachers, I hope this program can be replicated at many schools and for more at-risk groups, specifically girls who have been involved in many incidents this year. Why is it when fights or a student death occurs at a school, only the principal addresses it? It would go a long way for Dr. Williams to release a statement to that community directly impacted. Acknowledge it, make those kids and staff feel seen and supported. Mental help is brought up frequently at meetings. This week is ch Children's Mental Health Matters. Where is all the SEL money going to help these kids? What are the outcomes of that spending? Why does things seem to be getting worse when they should be getting better? Who's in charge of this effort and why are not we not hearing about the results? Can the board please hold the staff accountable for this? Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Darren Badillo. Good evening. Good evening, board. I'm here today uh, to stand up for Baltimore County uh, teachers, uh, students, and concerned parents. Um, as you just heard from the president of the Baltimore County Parent and Student Coalition, um, you know, violence in our schools have been escalating since the beginning of the year. And currently, it's out of control. Um, we have teachers scared to do their jobs. And I have two emails I would like to share. I'm not sharing any names of the schools, but I think it's important for you to hear this. Um, this was in March. Um, every week, we have students fight. And we have had several students fight this year where teachers got injured as well. One teacher is currently out with a concussion. Keep in mind, we have students from ages 5 to 11 years old. Enough is enough. Teachers are stressed and anxiety riddled just coming to do our jobs due to issues just like this. It's not my administration's fault as they're doing what they are told from above them. They try their best, but are limited on what they're allowed to do. Students are not allowed to be suspended unless it involves injury or student bringing a weapon to school. Where do we draw the line? It comes down to teachers teaching students right from wrong, and it starts in elementary schools. Teachers deserve respect and should not have to feel the way we do coming to do our work when we used to love our job. That was in March, and this is this, this past week. I honestly do not think the public realizes what's going on in the buildings on a daily basis. I had a student flip desk, make threats, and throw a computer the other day out of anger, and that student was allowed to come right back to class with no consequences because my administration is not allowed to do anything or they will get in trouble. It's really sad. It's a really sad situation that I don't think many people are fully aware of so I appreciate your desire to help and share, and that's why I'm sharing this today. Um, here's a clear message from a Baltimore County teacher who is crying out for help. Will you help her? I know we think about possible solutions. I know that Baltimore County police are short like 400 officers. Our SROs are limited. Um, Mr. McMillan, I want to thank you for being in the community um, uh, uh, listening to community residents' concerns, um, and Julie Han as well. Um, and I th I'm thinking about a possible solution. Um, maybe it's time that we outsource our security needs um, to help our schools that are limited to SROs in high crime areas. Um, I know there's only a couple months left of school, but we can't wait till next year to address the issue and violence in our schools. It's time to act now. 
please listen to this teacher. It's, it's a teacher appreciation week. Let's show them that we we'll really appreciate them by making decisions this week that's going to help them safe in schools and make them feel appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lloyd Allen. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Eid Mubarak and Happy Mother's Day. I'm asking you to keep retention and recruitment in mind as you finalize next year's budget, but I'm gonna take a minute to get there. In the spirit of Mother's Day, my name is Lloyd Allen, and like my mother and her mother before her, I am a teacher. Teaching is in my blood. My grandmother, Ora, rode her horse to teach from encyclopedias in a one-room schoolhouse in upstate New York. And her daughter, Elizabeth, was a reading specialist 15 years before special education was a thing. With three boys attending public school, she was distressed that although we had two excellent elementary schools and a stellar junior high, there was no high school. Catalina Foothills had to send all of our high school students to other districts and, as a district, pay tuition. Mom decided to do something about this and ran for a position on the elected school board. The school district continued to grow. During her last term, she was elected as president of the school board and was able to get another elementary school built to relieve overcrowding. Although she was able to lay the groundwork for the high school to be built, she and her caucus faced stiff opposition from budding career politicians. Three years after her final term ended and we moved away, we flew back to Arizona so that mom could shovel the first spadeful of earth for the groundbreaking for Catalina Foothills High School. I miss Arizona. I miss having postcard perfect sunsets every evening. This is the time of year that you can carefully pull down the Ocotillo spears, trying not to get stuck by their spines so that you can touch their flowers nectar to your tongue. You'd think I'd be there now, teaching where my mother's name is inscribed on a brick in the foundation. However, when I finished my master's in education, I found that Catalina Foothills starting pay would be two thirds of the starting pay that John Kreiner of BCPS had shared with me at the recruiting fair at Ohio State. As much as I would love to return to my birthplace and honor my mother's work, Catalina Foothills compensation did not support that choice. As we examine how to interpret Mr. Olszewski's response to our budget proposal, please note that our educators are experts in their field, are a finite resource, and that especially the first years have choices about who they're going to work for. Looking at the personnel notes, we're also having second year teachers vote with their feet. Are we compensating our teachers better than our fellow Maryland counties? How do our packages compare to Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, the places that we used to import teachers from as they begin to see their own teacher shortages? Dr. Williams, our staff members are not simply bodies. Please ensure that educators, especially our newer educators, are being compensated better than their regional peers for the survival of our system. Now, I am old, and so of course I don't want our veteran teachers to be taken for granted, but for our system to, be, to survive, we need to out-recruit everyone else and then continue to appropriately support our educators in all ways once they are hired. A 1.5% COLA will not. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jean Milstein. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Williams, Chair Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, and members of the board. I was recently involved in a lively discussion with special educators that centered around the position of additional adult assistant. In the school building, we call them AAs or triple A's. These staff members work one-on-one -on -one with students with significant needs in order to provide support and access to the curriculum. What these special educators want you, the Board of Education, to know is that the AAA position is a skilled position, and AAAs deserve to be treated as such by the school system. This position requires someone who works well with students and adults, who responds to instruction, and learns how to interact and support students with unique needs. It is a demanding job, both mentally and physically. Mentally, it requires patience and calm resolve. It requires the ability to read a non-speaking child and know when to prompt them to attend to the task at hand and when to prompt them to take a break in order to forestall a meltdown. It also requires monitoring a child to keep them safe during a meltdown and helping them process afterwards. 
How is someone supposed to be able to be 100% present when they also work third shift in a different department in order to make ends meet because they make minimum wage? This job is also physically demanding. Depending on the needs of the child, AAs help with tasks of everyday living. They help dress and feed students, transfer them into and out of adaptive equipment, and help them use the bathroom. How is someone able to be 100% present when they do not have county-provided health insurance and have limited sick time? These staff members are vital in providing access to education to our most vulnerable and medically fragile students. These students need consistency and trust. So why are these employees considered temporary staff with no direct path for advancement? The Board of Education has the ability to fix this, provide professional development, pay AAAs the wages that they deserve and what will allow us to retain them. And maybe, just maybe, we could allow for paid time off for motivated AAAs to take the paraprofessional exam so that we can grow our own paraeducators and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carol Vidal. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Williams, uh, President Ms. Han, and members of the board. I'm here to talk also about uh, my concerns related to school violence in BCPS. I appreciate the initiative that Dr. Williams shared with the news to create a student safety assistance, pro assistance program with trained staff in classroom management and de-escalation dedicated to building relationships with the students, as well as the continued support from the SROs. But I'm concerned that this may not be enough. It's already May, and considering background checks and such, by the time those positions are filled, we will have exposed our students to another month and a half of a chaotic environment not conducive to learning. It may look like the fights we see in the news were unlucky, isolated episodes, but we know that middle and high schools are experiencing unprecedented numbers of fights and don't have, that don't make the news or the principal's email. In our middle school, we have had fights, a teacher and students injured, drug dealing, and hallways smelling of marijuana. At one point in the year, we even had a child from another school come in and sit in the classroom. This is not hearsay, this is actually happening. At one of the area advisory meetings on school violence, a parent of a high school student mentioned that her children do not drink water at all, all day, so they don't have to go to the bathroom because they are afraid of the fights and vaping that takes place in school bathrooms. A central office representative said that this probably was a perception and not the reality, but we hear our children say that this is happening, and not only in high school, also in middle school where 12-year-old students are being invited to vape in the, in the school bathroom. Most children at BCPS have never seen a fight or been offered drugs before attending school. Why is their first time in a K through 12 building, school building? I believe children are doing this inside the school building because they know they can't. It's really up to us, the adults, to build a culture where school is a protective space from weapons, drugs, fights, or sexual assault. There are simple steps that can be taken immediately Children have been filming fights with their phones and posting them on social media. This, get, this gets attention from their peers and serves as a reward. What stops the school from limiting phone use? Some schools have algorithms to address violent behaviors where the last step is giving feedback to the teacher. That is not only not enough, but it makes the, the teacher's job impossible and it doesn't affect the behavior of the child. These algorithms need to be looked at by experts. With COVID, many parents have been shut out of school buildings and many families have lost the social contract with the schools. We need extra community engagement. Parents are willing to serve as hall monitors, engage with children who need extra help or assist teachers. Why are they being shut, down, shut out of the schools? Truly engaging the community, not, not just with a series of presentations on the, on the programs adopted by the system, but with back and forth about ideas on how to keep our local schools safe would make a difference. I know it's hard to lose control when there's so much going on, but it's always best to be transparent, address issues up front, and, and problem solve in a collaborative way. This board has been discussing issues with inequities among different areas of the school system. I think this is affecting all areas, and it's a good chance for you all to work on making schools safer. Thank you. Thank you. Our final general public comment speaker is Jen Reedholm. Good evening. Good evening. I'm a parent of three students in the system, and I'm coming to speak to you today about teacher retention. 
As you know, overall enrollment across the school system has greatly decreased. When the school system is failing, parents are looking for alternative options, and our area has many to choose from. Public education should be the best option to choose from. Sadly, that's not the case in Baltimore County. Not only are parents pulling their kids, but teachers are leaving in mass numbers as well. Is anyone really and truly looking into why teachers leave? We can all agree that there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed. However, we must not forget the backbone of the schools are the teachers. When they feel unsupported they, and see that their grievances are falling on deaf ears, violence in schools are increasing, does anyone honestly believe a teacher thinks it's worth it? I graduated college with my teaching degree. I wanted to be a teacher because of the amazing teachers I had growing up. I loved working with children and fostering their wonder for the world, helping them develop critical thinking skills and watching them grow. When I started teaching, it was then I realized, back in the late 90s, how much was put on teachers above and beyond the classroom. No one prepared me for how central administration will tell you how to run a classroom, but never step foot in one. No one prepared me for, for when they don't take the feedback on best practices from the front lines, the teachers. I got out early and found a job in corporate America, and I didn't look back until I have my own children in the system now. And the great thing is that I can still teach as a substitute. I work with kids as a middle school field hockey coach, a mentor with my Girl Scout troop, and so much more. I'm so lucky. I've been observing teachers exiting the school system in mass numbers for the last two years. I fully expect large numbers again this year, and it's alarming, yet not surprising. With the lower student enrollment, I understand teachers may not mean, need to be shifted. Business-wise, this makes sense. What doesn't make sense is when teachers are pulled out of a school at random just because a principal is told to reduce staff by X number of positions and those decisions are based on feelings rather than practical business sense. A teacher is supposed to be guaranteed a comparable position. That's not happening. I've heard from a few teachers where this is not happening and I know at least one seasoned tenure teacher with over 13 years experience who's probably Baltimore County's best teacher in that field who may not have no choice but to leave Baltimore County. Not only will this departure adversely affect the school, but it adversely affects the entire system because we will lose this amazing teacher to another school system. Why are we not doing everything to keep our best teachers here rather than kicking them to the curb? This also gives the teachers the perception that BCPS doesn't care about them and it's just a numbers game. If others are faced with the same scenario, they will likely look at other school systems and quit the profession altogether. Letting good teachers walk away is a mistake. BCPS is in crisis and letting amazing teachers leave. Thank you. Next is public comment on board policy 5580, bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, or intimidation. And our first speaker is Sharon Saroff. One of the things that I think Baltimore County needs to address in a policy concerning bullying is whether or not administrators are also bullying. One of the things that I've experienced personally in the past with my own students, and I have clients who are experiencing this again this year more so than ever, is feeling that they are being bullied and forced to put their students in unsafe situations by administrators and by people in central office. And this is definitely, in my opinion, not acceptable. And it needs to be put into a policy. I should not hear from a, from a client whose child comes home with bruises or a head injury four different stories from administrators on how that happened. You need to not just address students, you need to address administrators and people in your central office. Thank you. Next, Darren Badillo. Did he leave? No? Okay. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the report on board policies. This is the first reader for this policy, and for that I call on Ms. Lily Rowe, Chair of the Policy Review Committee. Sorry, 
I just lost my board docs. <laughs> Would you like me to present on behalf of the committee, Ms. Rowe? No, I have it. I just need okay. to drink. This is what happens when your windows close. Okay. Members of the board, the policy review committee asks that the board accept the committee's recommendation to amend the following board policies. Policy 2300, purchasing, purchases from minority and oh. small business enterprises. Ms. Rowe, we're on 5580. Item G on the agenda. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Members of the board, the policy review committee ask that the board accept this report of the committee's recommendation to amend board policy 5580, students, conduct, bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, and intimidation. This policy is presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit G. May I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board's Policy Review Committee for Policy 5580? So moved, Mac. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Abstain. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jose? Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report, and for that I call on Dr. Williams. Good evening, Board Chair Hen, Vice Chair McMillian, and members of the board. I am pleased to present my superintendent's report to the board and team BCPS. My report includes celebrations, operational updates, and evidence of our strategic plan, the compass, our pathway to excellence in action. Last week was National Student Leadership Week. Many thanks to all of our students who elevate student voice in our schools. Please join me in recognizing Nora Murray, BCPS Program Specialist, as the Maryland Association of Student Council's Regional Advisor of the Year. We can acknowledge Ms. Murray. <laughs> Ms. Murray was lauded for increasing participation and diversity in student leadership programs, establishing the new Baltimore County Junior Council for Middle School Students, hosting several statewide events, and implementing implicit bias training for students. So congratulations to Ms. Nora Murray. <laughs> yes. Next slide, please. A Delaney High School senior, Miriam Talele, has been named Baltimore County's Young Woman of the Year by the Baltimore County Commission for Women. Congratulations, Miriam. We're so proud of you. Best wishes to your next year at the University of Maine Honors College. Congratulations, Miriam Talele. We can <laughs> On Monday, May 2nd, Team BCPS staff, students, and community members wore apparel celebrating a college or university in honor of National Decision Day. Seniors shared their college or career plans with hashtag BCPS Decision Day. Congratulations to all of our seniors who have made college and career decisions for the fall. Just a reminder, prom and graduations are coming up soon. <laughs> 
Next slide, please. Thank you. May 1st to the 7th is Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Our Ma Mind Over Matters theme is Mental Health Matters. Join us in wearing green tomorrow, May 5th, for Children's Mental Health Matters Day to raise awareness. Alicia Amaral Freeman, an English for Speakers of Other Languages, or ESOL, teacher at Franklin Elementary School, is the 2022-23 Teacher of the Year for Baltimore County Public Schools. Ms. Freeman also teaches at Reisterstown Elementary and the Chatsworth School. She has had an outstanding career teaching in both Baltimore County and Baltimore City Schools. Following a six-year career as a Spanish and ESOL teacher in Baltimore City Schools, Ms. Freeman worked as an admissions director and principal before coming to BCPS in 2019. She earned a bachelor's degree in both in women's study and in visual arts from Bernard College of Columbia University and a master of arts degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages from Notre Dame of Maryland University. I'm proud to work with immigrant students and families, Ms. Freeman says, in them, I see my grandmother, a shame of her lack of access to education, and my grandfather, a janitor in a public school. I'm proud to be their granddaughter, helping to cultivate this next diverse generation of new Americans. Congratulations to our Teacher of the Year, Alicia Emerald Freeman. Congratulations, Ms. Freeman. We have Molly Kessel, front office secretary at Perry Hall High School, is the 2022-23 Office Professional of the Year for Baltimore County Public Schools. Ms. Kessel began working for BCPS in 2001, and she has served in, in office positions at Sandy Plains Elementary, Sandalwood Elementary, and Dundalk Middle School. Since 2015, she has been the secretary for the Southeast Extended Day Learning Program at Dundalk High School. She has been the front office secretary at Perry Hall High since 2017. From 2012 to 2014, Ms. Kessel left BCPS to do mission work in Tanzania. While there, she opened an orphanage that continues to operate. In nominating Ms. Kessel to be honored, Perry High High School Special education teacher Adrian Stanwood wrote, Molly goes above and beyond for the school and staff every day. She does her best to provide you with the tools needed to do your job and is always looking for ways to help where she can. She frequently gives up her own time to help in the office when it's busy. She is a wonderful example of the dedicated and highly skilled team workers working in our offices across the county. So congratulations, Molly Kessel, our ESP of the year. <laughs> Teacher Appreciation Week is here. Please join us in saying a tremendous hashtag Team BCPS thank you to all of our incredible teachers. We are truly grateful for your enthusiasm, expertise, and dedication. Let's acknowledge all of our teachers in BCPS. Thank you. Uh, we're still celebrating. Next slide. Let's hear it for our Team BCPS principals. Give your favorite principal a shout out using the hashtag, hashtag thanks BCPS principals. Principals, we honor and appreciate and thank you for your leadership, your support of our students and school communities, your advocacy and passion and everything else that you bring to your work every day. Can we acknowledge our principals? <laughs> Next week is National Nurses Week. Wednesday, May 11th is National School Nurses Day. Please join me in thanking our nurses for all of their help, support, and compassion and all that they do every day for our students and staff. May we acknowledge our nurses. So we know our efforts to heal, rebuild, and recover must be ongoing. We are seeing signs of progress as we adjust to the changing circumstances. We will continue to work together to respond to the ongoing needs of Team BCPS. 
while COVID-19 rates are much lower than they were in December and January, COVID-19 is still with us. As this fourth quarter brings back many well-deserved end of the year celebrations for our students and families, we encourage staff and families to continue to take steps to protect themselves and others by one, getting vaccinated and boosted, two, avoiding large indoor crowded spaces to the extent possible. If you're in a large crowd indoors, consider testing yourself about five days after the event and staying home and getting tested if you have symptoms of COVID-19. We all have to work together to remain healthy. Last month, I provided Team BCPS with details regarding our system response to emerging safety needs in our school communities. Our proactive plan includes grant-funded student safety assistance at the secondary level, enhanced community partnerships, revamp procedures to communicate outcomes related to bullying and harassment investigations, an information campaign to promote the use of the Maryland Center for School Safety reporting tip line, increased understanding of the code of conduct, and greater consistency in the application of guidelines across schools, updated school staff, de-escalation strategies, training, revised bus infraction reporting process, expanded self-regulation support and strategies for students, the reimagined alternative education options for students in need of wraparound supports and ongoing dialogue with neighboring school systems and our school communities for providing um, problem solving and feedback. I do encourage our, our families to continue to work with their school principals, to continue to talk with their classroom teacher, and to even visit our schools when there's um, questions about what's going on. We appreciate our partnerships with our parents and we welcome them into our buildings. The FY23 operating budget prioritizes people and progress by addressing critical staffing, hiring and retention issues through increased targeted compensation. Nothing's more important to a student's achievement than having a great teacher, administrator, and supporting staff. So I'm committed to retaining our current staff and ensuring BCPS's ability to attract new employees. To that end, I have met with our union leadership to address these concerns and reiter reiterate my commitment. Additionally, I've asked our fiscal team to explore potential options for additional compensation. We will continue working collaboratively with members of Team BCPS to enhance work conditions in the upcoming year. So I look forward to providing an update in the upcoming weeks. So thank you to our board. We will continue to update our board, our community, and team BCPS during these changing times. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. The next item on the agenda is the chair's report. My remarks are brief, but it is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I don't think it can be, ever be said too much. Thank you to our teachers. On behalf of the board, you are the heart of our school system. You do so much for our students that goes unnoticed, but you are in our hearts. And these, these little things stay with our students for a lifetime. I always think of my first teachers this week, especially, and keep them in mind with every action that this board takes. You are why we, we are here, because we know that taking care of you is the best thing we can do for our students because you can take you take care of them one of our speakers said tonight that you were the backbone of our system and to that i agree but you're also the heart of our system and we need to take care of you and that is our pledge my pledge and my commitment to you that not only the money as miss sexton said today it's a great line from the movie jerry Maguire: show me the money and we will go to bat for you and, and lobby to get you what you deserve, but also for the environment, the safety, the climate that you need to make BCPS the healthy, safe, desirable place to work because we know how much we need you. We know how much our students need you. Please know how much we appreciate you. Thank you. And our next item on the agenda is our student member of the board report. For that, I call on Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. 
Sorry, I have a bit of a, a sore throat right now. But good evening, board members. From last month's Earth Day Expo at my high school, Eastern Tech, to 15 of our own BCPS schools being recertified as green schools, environmental clubs, and so many of our middle schools and high schools around the county, as well as countywide student organizations like the Baltimore County Student Council's Environmental Committee, students around the county are actively engaging with our environment and pushing for sustainable practices in our community. Earlier today, I actually had the opportunity to visit one of our recertified green schools, Stoneley Elementary School, where students were excited to show me their Save the World projects, projects where they devised ways to stop pollution and littering and maintain a safe and sustainable world. Our young people, my peers, are motivated to see changes from our leaders related to environmental sustainability and protecting our environments. Inspired by them, I have worked with Dr. Williams, our board chair, and other board members to create and present the following resolution entitled the Environmental Sustainability Resolution, which reads, Whereas the Board of Education of Baltimore County Public Schools Board recognizes that there is significant opportunity to reduce and improve our environmental impact through sustainable practices, and whereas the board also recognizes that opportunities exist within our own within our system to reduce our environmental footprint, and whereas the Baltimore County Public Schools has set forth as part of its strategic plan the mission of establishing sustainable school facilities and encouraging student environmental stewardship, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education, herewith assembled in regular session on the fourth day of May in the year 2022 shall create an energy management and sustainability stakeholder work group tasked with developing recommendations for a new board policy on energy management and sustainability to be imp implemented by the superintendent and be it further resolved that from such policy the energy management and sustainability rule shall contain fiscally sound implementation strategies that include but are not limited to reducing waste preserving the existing natural environment and transitioning towards clean renewable energy sources and be it further resolved that all future replacement and, and or new constr school construction projects shall be considered for a maximum lead rating and or to achieve a net zero school status and be it further resolved that the board encourages the superintendent to expand and support green school programming, environmental extracurriculars and environmental curricula in every BCPS school. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Board members, may I have a motion to accept the resolution as presented by Mr. Thomas? So moved, Ms. Causey. Second Thank row. Thank you, Ms. Causey and Ms. Rowe. Any discussion? No? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jose? Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. And that concludes my small report. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is action taken in closed session. And for that, I call on Mr. Bersades. Earlier tonight, the board met in closed session in its quasi-judicial capacity to render a decision in appeal number HE22-13. Now would be a good time to confirm the vote taken in closed session. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the action taken in closed session on hearing examiner case HE22-13 and authorize Ms. Gover to sign for those board members not physically present. So moved, Ro. Is there a second? Second. Option. Thank you. Any discussion? Second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Abstain. Ms. Mack? Abstain. Ms. Jose? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mercedes. The next item on the agenda is contract awards, and for that I call on Ms. Joes, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Members of the board, the board's Building and Contracts Committee met on Monday, May 2nd. Items L1 to L26 are being forwarded to the full board for approval. 
Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve items L1 through L26? So moved, Offerman. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from, from the committee. Any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Recuse. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jose? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hem? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is unfinished business, consideration of board policies. And for that, I call on the Policy Review Committee Chair, Ms. Rowe. Members of the board, the Policy Review Committee asks that the board accept the committee's recommendation to amend the following board policies. Policy 3200, purchasing purchases for minority and small business enterprises. Policy 3209, purchasing purchasing principles. Policy 3210, purchasing purchasing guidelines. Policy 5100, enrollment and attendance, compulsory attendance. Policy 5120, enrollment and attendance, attendance and excuses. The Policy Review Committee also asked the board to accept the new board policy 5480, services to students, pregnant and parenting students. This recommendation is presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit M. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendations of the board's Policy Review Committee? So moved, Mac. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Causey? Abstain. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Jose? Abstain. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Dr. Hager? <coughs> yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is information items, which include the revised superintendent's rules 6400 and 6402, and minutes of the February and March Southeast Area Education Advisory Council meetings. The next item on the agenda is board member comments and consideration of agenda items for future board meetings. Board members, please note that items provided at past meetings have been received and are being reviewed. Ms. Rowe? I have no further items at this time. Thank you. Ms. Causey? Thank you, Madam Chair. Are we doing agenda items now and then followed up with board member comments? or is They're it, combined. They're combined. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to echo the um, appreciation that has already been stated tonight uh, related to um, our teachers, um, but also our principals and our education support professionals. Um, it was um, ironic and... and to me that one of the articles that uh, we get a number of art education articles and the uh, title is school support staffers don't make a living wage here's a comparison by state and it just speaks to how nationwide there is um, insufficient support for those um, employees that do so much for our students and as we heard here tonight in public comment that uh, our own special educators also believe uh, these staff are skilled, compassionate, and should be compensated and supported with benefits in a way that allows them to do their best for our students, for the uh, staff that they support. Um, so while we congratulate Molly Kessel, as Dr. Williams pointed out, uh, Education Support Professional of the Year, uh, the glue, as we all know, the office, front office secretaries are, um, that it is um, un unfortunate that this is the article that I read today in Education Week. Um, but as our chair, uh, Ms. Hen, said, uh, that this board has gone to bat and will continue to consider what we can do for our educators and our support staff. And I appreciate Dr. Williams pointing out that he has had recent discussions uh, considering additional compensation. That's very encouraging. So uh, just know that my heart is with all of you. Um, and I hope that we can uh, continue to improve and, and, and do better. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mack? 
Yes, um, last week I was able to visit and interact with staff at Lock Raven Academy and Lyons Mills Elementary. Um, on Thursday, April 28th, I was honored to attend BCPS Teacher of the Year Awards Assembly at Carver. Congratulations to the nominees, the finalists, and as Dr. Williams highlighted, the Teacher of the Year for 2022-2023, Ms. Alicia Amaral Freeman, who, as Dr. Williams said, is an ESOL teacher at Franklin High School. Also, congratulations to Ms. Molly Kessel, the 2022-23 Office Professional of the Year, and many, many thanks to our teachers, our support personnel, and our administrators, because you're who really matters in this whole equation of what's important in schools. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Jones? Thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, I would like to um, thank all of our teachers, principals, paraeducators, and staff in all of our schools, and uh, also Eid Mubarak to everybody who celebrates. Uh, for the agenda item, I would like, um, as mentioned previously, an update on the board's corrective action plan uh, at the next meeting as an agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? The next audit committee meeting is May 10th at 4.30. For those of you that don't know, I taught in Baltimore County Public Schools for 35 years and 10 months. I've been out of the classroom for three and a half years. I have not forgotten what it's like to be in the classroom. Uh, I commend you for staying there. I know it's a very difficult job. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You know, email me and we'll talk if you've got an issue. And I'll listen to you and I'll try to help resolve your issue. And I say that as genuinely and as sincerely as, as I'm sitting here right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Thank you. Uh, in honor of National Principals Day, I'd like to thank Mrs. Hutchinson, Mr. Tanner, and Ms. Anderson for all of the experiences I've had with, over the past 13 years in BCPS. Ms. Hutchinson was my elementary school principal, Mr. Tanner my middle school principal, and Ms. Anderson my current principal. Um, it was incredible to MC the BCPS Teacher of the Year event, and I want to extend my thanks to uh, Boyende, uh, Ms. Charlie Green, Dr. Williams for allowing me the opportunity to MC that event, and I am incredibly proud uh, of our Teacher of the Year and all of our finalists. And lastly, um, since our last board meeting, I have visited Carver High School, uh, Carver Center for the Arts, Milford Mill, Stoneley Elementary School, Deep Creek Middle, Middle River Middle, West Town Elementary School, Scotts Branch Elementary School, Perry Hall High School, Hawthorne Elementary School, Dogwood Elementary School, and Newtown Elementary School. And I'm excited to reach a max of 81 schools visited uh, by the end of my term, which will include every single middle school and high school in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Offerman? Yes, I want to thank everyone who works for this system. And uh, I recognize, as after being a 37-year employee myself, how absolutely difficult it is, and it's gotten harder since I left, I'm sure. Uh, I would like to see for uh, the future consideration an overview of uh, overall school school safety uh, processes that that we have in place, and and perhaps a uh, a, a look at uh, a look at what needs we have. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Scott. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to say uh, that um, I am happy with um, our equity committee and how things are going. Thank you, Dr. Hager, for stepping in and chairing the equity committee meeting where um, it was discussed uh, Black Boy Joy and Genius. It looks like at Pikesville Middle School, and it was also discussed um, at or it was reviewed rather black boy joy and genius at southwest academy and i would like to share with everyone the important work that the equity committee is doing we're looking at trends and um the different kinds of things that we're focusing on and i would like to make a recommendation that some of those presentations that are in our equity committee and um that our our um equity council has actually brought to us actually be brought to the board um, to be shared with um, the board members and the larger public. So that's my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Hager? Um, I don't have any uh, additional items for the agenda. I just want to say that on Teacher Appreciation Week, I truly appreciate all the wonderful BCPS teachers and staff who have taught and guided my children and me during our educational journeys through BCPS. And um, in addition, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed seeing all the smiling faces and prom pictures this prom season. 
And I hope that all of our BCPS students had or will have a wonderful and safe time at prom. And it's just um, wonderful to see this for the first time in two years. Um, again, all the smiling faces really have made, made me very happy. That's all. Thank you. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The board's next meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 17th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. The board will also hold its fiscal year 2024 capital budget public hearing on Wednesday, May 18th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. More information to register for this virtual public hearing will be available on the board's participation by the public website. Thank you for joining us tonight. The meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>